<clears throat> so we said estuaries are basically uh, semi-enclosed, so they have uh, ocean water coming in and fresh water coming in, right? They could also be evaporative estuaries, of course, but nonetheless, this means there is a mixing issue involved. This obviously depends broadly on the volume of water coming in and the depth of the estuary which create the relative uh, densities of the surface waters and the deeper waters. So the normal estuarine flows tend to be that heavier marine water, ocean water flows in at the bottom. The fresher water coming from land tends to flow out at the top. We'll see that there are exceptions to this, but nonetheless, when the estuary is fairly shallow and the fresh water flow is not that high, the winds are able to mix it up and the density contrast is not so strong so you end up with this kind of a ver vertically mixed estuary so you can see that the salinity is fairly well mixed down to the bottom which is shallow 10 20 parts per thousand 30 per parts per thousand to the mouth of the estuary where it mixes with the ocean and becomes the normal ocean water which is usually around 34 35 parts per thousand as we learned before correct so if you have a deeper estuary uh, then you can have uh, a slightly stratified so you can see here fresh water is flowing out uh, farther near the surface whereas the ocean water with higher salinity is coming in at the bottom and there is uh, cross mixing happening in the vertical direction depending on how much mixing there is how much evaporation happens and what is the volume of the flow and so on broad categories just remember the terminologies highly stratified when the estuary is deep and you have a relatively strong halocline then the ocean water uh, doesn't mix so much with the surface this again depends on what is called surface turbulent kinetic energy which is a combination of cube of the wind speed because wind can stir the water and buoyancy forcing means heating or cooling for example heating will make the surface warmer and stratify the water more whereas cooling let's say by evaporation or winter time uh, heat loss can make the densities heavier and can uh, facilitate mixing so highly stratified here shown uh, salinity decreasing again towards the mouth and heavier water coming in and very little uh, vertical mixing you get a salt wedge when a very deep very high volume of water comes in to the head of the estuary and basically pushes against the ocean water and creates this heavy salt wedge you can see here the brackish water of 10 parts per thousand is going all the way to the mouth of the estuary okay and the ocean water is being restricted close to the mouth of the estuary and it's mixing up with this high volume of fresh water okay so quickly moving on to the estuaries and human activities uh, I mentioned a couple of things the, uh, the salinity and its effects uh, on the coastal waters runoff and snow melt for example so even in a monsoon uh, region like the Bay of Bengal rain happens during the summer and the river runoff peaks a uh, little bit after that so the species that live in the estuaries or open ocean and come to the estuaries for some part of their life cycle are used to these uh, seasonal variability in level of salinity which is also of often related to the level of oxygen in the water because the oxygen is also dependent on how much sediment there is how much mixing happens etc etc right mixing is like ventilation so the oxygen in the atmosphere which is high gets mixed into the water when there is mixing so you can have highly stratified water then the bottom waters can get very low in oxygen as we will see a little bit later on that is not good for life so important breeding grounds for many marine animals does occur in the estuaries crabs things like that live on the bottom uh, or they are reef builders like uh, oysters uh, clams and so on they cannot move very fast so if you start to perturb the system then you you begin to kill them 
okay? Whereas some fish can, of course, run away, but their life cycle can get disrupted if there are perturbations by human activities. So there are many protective nurseries, and the human populations moving closer and closer to the coast and increasing agriculture on land, deforesting, urbanizing, etc. are obviously putting a lot of pressure on these uh, valuable nurseries, biodiversity, uh, and so on. Okay, um, And those are very finely balanced because when a fish, let's say, goes and lays eggs, it wants to make sure that the eggs just don't float away they have to be circulation has to be such that they have to be contained and the salinity conditions friction etc have to be a certain uh, level like the uh, grunion we saw which were uh, hatching the eggs on uh, during the spring tide in the sand for example right those are very finely tuned evolutionary features and when the uh, eggs hatch, they immediately uh, the larvae immediately start looking for food, but there are other creatures which want to eat the larvae. So the evolution has optimized all these things, uh, circulation, food availability, predation pressure, and so on. So when humans uh, perturb the system, they perturb all these things. Okay, so Columbia River estuary is uh, one fine example. There are others that we will look at, uh, Ganga, Brahmaputra, Nile, uh, Mississippi, and so on. So it produces this big uh, salt wedge estuary by bringing in so much water. Of course, there have been tons of dams built. You can see there are many, many, many dams built. And that reduces the sediment flow as well as the water transport coming into uh, the ocean at the end. Um, so damage done by, f uh, also done by the agricultural land here. All the forests have been converted into agriculture over time, vineyards and so on and so forth. Um, and this is also a place where salmon, which grow up in the salt waters of the ocean, swim up the fresh water to the head of the river uh, to lay eggs and die. What a life, right? And then the baby salmons have to swim back down into the ocean, grow up, and then they go back when they are ready to um, lay eggs and die. So this is completely damaged, and there are, of course, advantages, energy production, uh, uh, shipping for uh, uh, logging industry, uh, water for agriculture. So. Humans want things out of the systems, but they don't always uh, worry about who else is using the system uh, other than them. So the coexistence part is not always easy. So salmon uh, ladders and so on are built so that the uh, fish can swim upstream. Yes, salmon ladders, that's what I said. When a dam comes, the salmon cannot jump across, so they use this ladder and they climb across uh, to the other side and manage to get o uh, over. Obviously, their life cycle is affected by this. Um, and uh, I will stop there because the Chesapeake has its own interesting story, especially because it's uh, in the neighborhood of the nation's capital, right? So we are looking at the circulation in the estuaries, the life cycle of many species that goes on there, and how human perturbation affects not only the circulation, but also the life cycle of many of the species. Uh, and then when we'll come to pollution, we will see that there are even more complicated issues to worry about.